Guys, let me know in the comments, what would you imagine if you were trying to build your perfect all-in-one router? What would you give it? 10 gig ports? Two and a half gig ports? One gig ports? SFP Plus, Wi-Fi 7, a great OS that has things like meshing capabilities, VPNs and VLANs, the ability to run multiple SSIDs. It just so happens that this thing has landed in the studio. It's brand new from Asus. It's called the RBBE88U. And it might just be the all-in-one device that people should get if they want a bit of everything. Now, before I go ahead and deploy this thing in the studio, I wanna talk quickly about its design because let's face it, you've gotta look at it. The general device itself is quite nice with a matte black finish and subtle gold accents on both the logo, through the ventilation and on the antennas, which I think would be my only nitpick with this device overall, the fact that it has external antennas. I wish Asus could figure out a way to build these things within the body, but we'll test that Wi-Fi 7 later in the video. Running things on the inside, we've got a quad-core 2.6 gigahertz CPU, and I think that's needed to handle everything that's on the back of this device. What's on the back, you might be asking? Well, in a nutshell, everything that you would really need. To start, you can see 10 total ports, of which four of them run at one gig, and then you've got the other four running at two and a half gig. And then those remaining two ports are 10 gig ports and come in two separate flavors, Ethernet and SFP+. This is brilliant news because it may just mitigate you having to buy some extra hardware to expand your network, or simply just add things like SFP+, if you have a device that needs it. As time goes on, the number of all-in-one devices that have an SFP port on the back are definitely growing, but Asus are really leading the pack here, and it's nice to see. I've done the math as well, and if you populated every single port on the back of this device to its full capability, you'd have around 34 gigabits per second of switching. I literally have no way to test that in the studio because that is mental. I apologize. But with all of these available ports on the back, I could deploy this in the studio and it would completely get rid of two or three separate bits of hardware that I've got in here to make the network operational. Because this thing just has it all built into one unit. So let's see if that's gonna work or not. So I wanna dive straight in to this device and figure out how I'm gonna actually use it in this studio. And I think it's gonna make the setup in here quite a bit easier. So we actually have a 10 gig fiber SFP plus link giving internet to the studio from the house. And thus far, there hasn't been any all-in-one devices that have been able to accommodate that SFP port. And currently, I'm using this in access point mode because we already have a router in the house connected to this SFP cable. But talking about an overpowered router, as far as ports are concerned, most come with four. This has 10. It's got 10 ports on it. This is acting as basically a wireless access point and a really overpowered switch with 10G and 2.5G ports on the back. So I found a folder here, which is 10 gig. I'm gonna now drag that to the desktop and hopefully we can saturate around two gig, obviously connected at a two, it's do, doing it in a minute. And as you can see up the top, we are using 2.20 gigabits per second, confirming that the two and a half gig switch inside is definitely up to two and a half gig. So in our use case, with this device set up in access point mode, getting its internet connection over the SFP plus port and interfacing with two devices, our NAS and this MacBook with two and a half gig, it works fine. But realistically here, we are only scratching the surface because this thing also has a wireless access point in it, which basically renders the Wi-Fi 6 access point that we've got in the office useless. Just don't need it anymore because this thing gives out Wi-Fi 7. Speaking of, let's give that a test. So as far as the radios inside this device, we're looking at a dual band Wi-Fi 7 chip with all the latest bells and whistles. So that's things like MLO, multi-link operation, and 4K QAM to enhance data transmission. MLO or multi-link operation really warrants its own dedicated explainer video. But in a nutshell, it basically means that you can connect wireless devices to this device using two bands at once, the 2.4 and five gigahertz. 
Why would you want to do this? Well, loads of reasons. It will completely increase your throughput and hopefully lower your latency, simply because there's just more available spectrum to play with. Now, this all sounds well and good on paper, but the problem is that the client devices connected to this wirelessly need to support these features as well, or you'll be out of luck. For example, the wireless 7 card that I purchased specifically to test this device doesn't support MLO. Well, it does, but it doesn't work because of a driver issue or something. The takeaway from this is that this supports all of the high-end features. You're just gonna need to wait for client devices like laptops, smartphones, tablets, and computers to support these same features before you can take advantage of them. To test the wireless range, I placed the router at the back of my driveway and then walked to the entrance of the house, which is just over 200 feet of distance. In this exact testing scenario, the only Wi-Fi access points that I've seen provide sufficient coverage down at the end of the drive are that that are directional access points, meaning they put all of their power into one direction. In the case of this device, this is an omnidirectional access point, meaning that you can get coverage 360 degrees around it. I was testing over 400 meg at 5 gigahertz on Wi-Fi 7 down at the end of the driveway. That is absolutely mental. So all that's to say, the Wi-Fi access point in this device as tested will provide you with a strong long range wireless coverage with all the latest bells and whistles in both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. But I can already hear what you're typing. Alex, where's the six gigahertz? Well, we'll come on to that shortly within the OS. Now, when you first get connected to this device, you can click on advanced settings and choose an operation mode as to which there's loads. And the Wi-Fi settings are also plentiful too. You can disable Smart Connect, which will give you two separate names for both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks. You can change your channels, the security. It's even got WPA3, which is sick. Now, the Guest Network Pro is where this thing kind of shines because you can set up multiple VLANs to have multiple separate networks. So, for example, we could create our own 5 gigahertz only network with a schedule, a time schedule, or a bandwidth limit of let's say 10 meg each way so the kids aren't hogging the broadband. And then once that's created, you can then assign it to a separate VLAN, which is basically a virtual LAN network. And then you can also go in and tie those VLANs to certain ports on the back of the device itself. So it's not just limited to Wi Fi, you can change the VLANs on certain ports. Now, VPN is another big feature. A lot of people are using in this day and age. You can set this device up as a VPN server, or you can use what Asus called VPN Fusion, which allows you to connect this device to a separate VPN server. And you can go ahead and add loads of types here, my favorite being WireGuard. Now, the last thing to really brush on here is Asus's AI Mesh. Now, this is a really cool service, and I've talked about this a bit on the channel before. Basically, with this, you can add an AI Mesh node. Now, an AI Mesh node is basically any other Asus router, and they go back a long way. Even really old Asus routers are compatible with this mode. So if you've got some other Asus hardware lying about, you can actually use this free of charge to expand your wireless network, which is really good to make sure old devices don't go into landfill. But remember earlier I said this device doesn't support 6 gigahertz? You could actually get yourself a 6 gigahertz access point from Asus and connect it to this router with the AI mesh and then you're still using this router with all its really powerful features and you've got yourself a 6 gigahertz radio to take advantage of. They're really not leaving much out on the table here with this device. In the UK, this device retails for $339.99. And to build out a similar network as this with off-the-shelf parts, with the same routing performance as this, a Wi-Fi 7 access point, and maybe a switch with 10 gig ports, two and a half gig ports, and SFP plus, you'd be looking at 500 pounds plus, and that is really scraping the barrel. Not to mention that isn't including all of the cables that you'd need to connect it all together. And should I mention actually having the knowledge of knowing how to do so in the first place. And just for some context, our enterprise two and a half gig switch that's lived in the office for the last two years costs 450 pounds on its own, which is mental. 
Now, I mentioned the antennas at the start of the video, but it kind of goes without saying. Having all of this equipment built into one device could be far cleaner than buying all of these separate devices separately and connecting them all together with an absolute beehive of cables. So with the price in mind and the extra simplicity that comes with buying a really powerful all-in-one like this, not to mention the extra features like the AI mesh and the VPNs and the multiple VLANs, I really think this thing should be on your radar if you're looking to upgrade your router in 2024. Because in all honesty, there really isn't much that this thing can't do. Anyway, my name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.